Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Ask Kate with me, Kate, brought to you by the Children's Tumor Foundation. Today, I want to talk a little bit more in depth about neurofibromatosis type 2. A lot of our videos have covered topics that are mostly or only relevant to those living with NF1, so today I want to just go a little more in depth about NF2. So these two conditions have really similar names, and so often people confuse them or think that they are perhaps more related than they are. Um, they do carry uh, some similarities, and there's a reason that they have similar names. Um, but today we're going to focus on NF2. So we know that NF2 is less common than NF1. We know that it affects approximately 1 in 10,000 live births each year, and that it does not discriminate uh, based on gender, ethnicity, where in the world you live, the choices your parents make. Um, NF2 is what we call an autosomal, autosomal dominant disorder. Um, so autosomal just means it's not related to sex or your sex chromosomes. Um, and dominant means that one inheriting one bad copy of, your, of the NF2 gene is enough to mean that you have NF2. So for every um, gene in your body, you get a pair. You get one from your mother, one from your father. And if you receive a mutated copy of the NF2 gene, a changed copy, um, then you can will have NF2. Um, so what this means is that people living with NF2 are prone to developing non-cancerous tumors. The reason for this is because the NF2 gene makes an important protein uh, that is called the Merlin protein, which does stand for something that is long and hard to say, and I, I won't go into it. But essentially, the Merlin protein is responsible when cells meet. Merlin says, okay, stop dividing, don't multiply anymore. And so if there's a mutation or a change in the NF2 gene, then the Merlin protein will not deliver that message effectively. Um, it, won't be, it won't be there to say, stop, no more. And this results in the non-cancerous or benign tumors that we see in NF2. The specific tumors in NF2, which are important because it's one of the ways it differ differentiates it from NF1, um, are called vestibular schwannomas. These used to be called ac acoustic neuromas, so you might hear that term. Uh, but these are benign, meaning not cancerous tumors that develop on the eighth cranial nerve. Um, this is the nerve that's responsible for carrying balance and hearing information from the inner ear to the brain. And as a result of that, you'll see hearing loss, sometimes partial, sometimes complete. Um, some people have uh, bilateral vestibular schwannomas, meaning they have this tumor on uh, both sides, both ears. Um, some have it only on one. And the, the size of the tumor can differ on each side, and, and so there can be a lot of variation there. People with NF2 can also develop different types of tumors called meningiomas or ependymomas. They can also have juvenile cataracts that they develop um, in childhood. So if you want to learn a little bit more about what some of those things are, what is an ependymoma, what is a meningioma, you're always welcome to comment here or email me. But we also have a fabulous um, resource in our resource library at the CTF website that's called NF2 Newly Diagnosed. And it has some really great information and goes more into depth about the different types of tumors. Um, and really the name of the tumors um, indicates to, um, where it is developing and what it looks like under a microscope, essentially. Um, and so that can be helpful if it just for your own curiosity. Um, we also know that in NF2, if a parent has NF2 and they have a child, for each child they have, independent of other, um, other pregnancies or other children, um, there is a 50-50 chance that that child will also have NF2, meaning it's like tossing a coin for each pregnancy. Um, now, if you are uh, the first person in your family to have NF2, it's unlikely that your, your parents or that would have other children, siblings of yours, with NF2. Um, because what we call that a spontaneous mutation, which means it, it, it happened um, to you spontaneously. It wasn't something you inherited. It wasn't a mutated gene that you inherited from your parent. We don't fully understand why this happens yet, and it's definitely an area of research that we are still um, looking at. Now, similar to NF1, uh, we have identified several uh, mutations and variations in the way that the NF2 gene can be changed to cause the, the disease NF2. Um, in fact, uh, most recently, I think the number was upwards of 300 different types of mutations that do result in NF2. Um, but 
Also similar to NF1, we don't yet fully understand how these different mutations impact your health. So in NF2, there will be variation into how, um, how sick someone is, the specific types of tumors they develop, how much pain they're in, the hearing loss, things of that nature, who gets juvenile cataracts and who doesn't. Um, and we're, we really want to understand if we know the mutation, can we predict your prognosis or your future? Um, and that's, that's an important question that we are still researching. So let's talk for just a little bit about the diagnostic criteria for NF2. It's a bit more complex than the diagnostic criteria for NF1, and it's actually something that's currently under review by worldwide experts. Um, but for now, I'm just going to share the information that is in our newly diagnosed NF2 um, brochure um, because it's still being used widely in the NF2 community and is not inaccurate, though it may um, be updated soon. So diagnostic criteria for NF2 include um, bilateral vestibular schwannomas, which mean those schwannoma tumors that affect both ears, or, so you could have that all by, your, all by itself, and we would say you have NF2. Um, so, or a first degree relative with NF2 and one, what we call a unilateral vestibular schwannoma that affects only one ear, and any two of the following. Okay, so this is very complex. It's actually probably easier to read. So again, I just wanna put a plug in for reading our newly diagnosed brochure. Um, but basically with NF2, I'm just gonna pause and explain that it, be, it can be difficult to make the diagnosis if you don't have the bilateral vestibular schwannomas. So if you don't have that um, type of tumor affecting both ears, but you have it affecting one ear, or you have some of these other things, um, like multiple meningiomas, which is one of the other types of tumors that we see in NF2, um, we are gonna start looking into NF2 as a possible diagnosis for you. Um, and so take a look at that criteria, read through it, um, and again, always reach out to me if you have any questions about um, the kind of the layering of how that diagnostic process happens. Um, okay, so the last thing I want to talk just briefly about is medical management with NF2. Um, I think even probably possibly more than our NF1 population, it can be difficult to find a clinic and a doctor that understands NF2 um, to the extent that you as the patient would really want them to understand it. Um, NF2 involves so many different systems in the body, so there you might need to be seeing several different doctors from different specialties to receive the kind of care that you need. Um, so currently, the, the best standard of care would be to be seen in a multidisciplinary NF2 clinic. Um, but we know that for so many of our patients, that simply is not an option. So again, I want to I wanna encourage you to be your own advocate, to educate yourself as much as you can, to use the resources that we offer here at CTF, to be, to be your own, um, like I said, to be your own advocate, to fight for what you know that you need, and to learn how to communicate effectively with the doctors that you see. And it may be, may be necessary for you to be referred to several different types of doctors um, in order to get the proper care. Uh, but again, I'm always available if you're looking for an NF2 doctor, um, please reach out to me. I'm happy to try and assist, even if there's not an NF clinic network clinic near you that we can refer you to. Um, there may be other resources in the area that we can um, that we can discuss or that we can offer to you. So some of the specialists that you might see if you have NF2 can include, it's not limited to, and may not all include all of, uh, but neurology, ENT, which is also called otolaryngology, so there's a mouthful. Ophthalmology, which is the eye doctor. Uh, neuro-ophthalmology, which is a special kind of eye doctor. Um, no, but they also um, are doctors who understand the way that the eyes and the nervous system interact. Um, <clears throat> oncology, which these doctors focus mostly on diagnosing and treating um, tumors. Pediatric medicine, of course, if it's a child genetics, um, neurosurgeons. So these are some of the main players you'll see in your NF2 team. <clears throat> and again, we hope that um, you can see some of them in a, in a clinic, in one clinic setting. That is the, the hope and the goal for the NF clinic network is to be able to provide that to more people across the country. Okay, so I hope this video has been helpful today as a little bit of a special focus on NF2. I would actually really love to hear from our NF2 community with questions that you have about living with NF2. Um, I'd like to do more videos that are relevant to you, and I simply just, I just don't hear from the NF2 community as much as I hear from those that are living with NF1. 
um, and we care about all of you and I want to make videos that are helpful to you. So if you have questions or if I've said something that doesn't seem to line up with your experience with NF2 or has triggered a question, um, please comment uh, down below. Uh, I can make follow-up videos and tag you or you can just email me directly and, and we can have a conversation. And your question might be one that a lot of other people have too. So uh, what do they always say in school, right? There are no, there are no dumb questions. So I hope to hear from all of you. Thanks again for tuning in.